This is a truck. <laughs> you guys wondered where this intro song went? I had to bring it back. Let's go. Rent got too expensive, had to leave LA. San Diego's where I'm headed, I'm mixing it up like a parfait. Playing poker every day. Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet. We are not in California anymore, boys. This is a truck. <laughs> From El Paso, we drive four hours north to Albuquerque to get a session in with our buddy Justin. And see that guy super excited in the back? That's Damien, more on him later. The casino is called Sandia and it's named after the beautiful mountain range it sits in front of. Check it out. We hop into the 1-2 for $400 and really didn't catch many interesting hands other than one time picking up a nice pot with the bullets. After the session, Damien asked me to sign a chip for him and his father-in-law, which inspires a few others to ask the same. I mean, come on now, this is what it's all about. And he even has a platypus card protector to match my mud kip. We ended up booking a $213 profit, which barely pays for the gas. We're on the road again, five hours to Lubbock. Get it. I brought it just for you, buddy. Uh, All you gotta do is win it, bro. Come and take it. All you gotta do is take it. The name of the game here at Stack Social Club in Lubbock is $5 to $15 on the button. I'm in for $1,500, and did I mention there's no flop bomb pots? Let's go. We buy into the game for $1,500. As you can see though, we looked down at pocket aces, but I only have $1,000 in my stack. A lot of raising and folding and missing a lot of flops. Either way, we looked down at pocket aces, there's $15 on the button. I raise it up to $50, and we get called by Barry and Evan. Three ways to a flop, which comes ace, nine, deuce, bang, we flop top set. Dream spot for us and out of position versus two opponents. I decided to bet one third for $50 and I think I could go larger like 75 or 100. Barry gets out of the way and Evan does as well. Oh well, flopping herself a set is no shabby way to start the session. First hand of the night, we're taking down some profit. 1100 in our stack, I look down at King 10 offsuit with $15 on the button. I'm in middle position and open it up to $40. We're gonna get four callers, so we're going five ways to the flop with $200, which comes ace, three, six with two clubs. Early position decides to donk out into me for $15. And if I was heads up, I could be going for a raise representing all the strong aces, but given the fact there's three other opponents left to act, I decide to put in the $15 and see what happens. All three opponents put in the call, so we didn't lose anybody and we're off to the jack of spades on the turn. Nice card for us because now we pick up a gutter to Broadway. Early position continues for a small sizing of $25. And I'm not going anywhere. I put in $25 as well. All three other players do as well. We're still going five ways to a river, which doesn't come a queen or a king. It comes a seven of diamonds. Unfortunate for us, but now the opponent checks to me. Given the fact that none of the three opponents behind me raised on the flop or the turn, I don't really think they're too strong. If I go for a nice size bet, maybe they'll fold and I'll just take down a $400 pot. So that's what I decided to do. I didn't drive to Texas not to pull off a bluff or two. This is a one spot. I bet out for $125. All three opponents fold behind me, which is great news. And then the early position player does as well. We're going to take down that pot and show the table. King High is taking down that $400 pot. Let's freaking go. Oh, oh dirty. Man, I, I, <laughs> I know dirty, you did. I, know. I had a seven. I can't go on to you. Remember earlier when I mentioned the no flop bomb pots, basically what that means is if there's no flop on the previous hand, the next hand is going to be a PLO bomb pot single board, and in this one we look down at ace, king, deuce, ten, double suited. Pretty great hand, one raise to $30. I decided to put in the call and the late position calls as well. We're going three ways to a flop which comes ace, queen, eight with two clubs. Not only do I have top pair, I have a gutter to Broadway, and I have a nut flush draw with a king 10 of clubs. 
pretty great spot for us. Early position decides to bet out for $50 and I could be going for a raise but I want to keep the late position player in for another $50 in case I hit my good hand. I decided to call the 50 bucks but unfortunately late position finds a fold. We're off to a turn which doesn't help us at all it comes to 6 of diamonds. Early position does not slow down he continues for the same sizing of $50 and now I think a raise would be pretty good. Instead I just put in 2 green chips that's a call and we're off to the river which comes to 10 of diamonds giving us 2 pair. When he slows down and checks it over to me I have 2 pair and I'm going to go for some thin value. I'm not an expert on these PLO bomb pots so this might be going a little bit too thin with 2 pair when the backdoor diamonds come in. Still into the $290 pot I go small for 75 bucks and we basically get snap called so I don't know if I love that. When I turn over my 2 pair the opponent turns over a worse 2 pair so it looks like we got the maximum there taking down that $440 pot finally up $145 on the session. This next hand is a wonky one. I look down at king queen of spades from middle position. The $15 is on the button. I raise it up to $50. A really good player here in Lubbock. His name is Evan. He puts in the three bet to $150. We get one call from late position and now I could be going for a four bet with king queen suited but instead I like to put in the 150 when we're off three ways to a flop. It gives us a pair, it comes ace king 8 with 2 clubs, but I'm never donking into Evan when he 3-bets me preflop. I check it over to him and he goes for a good sizing of a quarter pot for $125. The late position puts in the call which is definitely going to bring me in. I'm not going to fold for 125 when I have second pair good kicker. 125 goes into the middle and we're off to the turn in a nearly $800 pot which comes to 4 of hearts. Still never going to be leading here. I start with a check and Evan checks his option which brings the action over to late position. I wouldn't blame the late position player for taking up the betting lead and betting out large here but instead he checks behind which gives us a free card on the river and it comes to 5 of clubs completing the front door flush. Still, I can't be leading with my king high, so I check it over to Evan. He checks again, basically waving the white flag and giving up on the hand. And now late position bets really small for 150. I don't love the spot because obviously the front door flush draw gets there. Any weak ace is going to be incentivized to go for thin value. But at the same time, he's betting 150 into 825. I only have to put 150 in the middle, so that's what I do. I toss in a bunch of green chips, and Evan reluctantly gets out of the way. The late position turns over king. King 10 offsuit and I turn over my king queen. We're going to scoop that thousand dollar pot. How does he have king 10 offsuit there? I'm not too sure but no complaints for me. That's why sometimes you got to put the money in when you have the right pot odds. We're taking down that one thousand dollar pot and when we pan over to Evan the look on his face depicts the way this hand was played pretty well. I don't have the whole version of this hand. We just catch it at the end. I'm showing my losses here. I end up getting three quartered in a double board PLO bomb pot versus Evan. We both have jack queen on the bottom board but he had the flush on the top so he's gonna three quarter me in a very large pot and our stack size went from two thousand dollars all the way down to a thousand where we looked down at king five of hearts on the button i put in the fifteen dollars on the button and evan our nemesis under the gun raises it up to forty dollars I defend my button looking for a little bit of vengeance and the flop comes queen five deuce with two hearts. Pretty great flop for us. We have a pair and we have the front door flush draw. Evan checks it over to me. I decide to go for a bet of $35 and he now check raises me to 125. Obviously after that large pile with him, I'm going nowhere with my flush draw. I put in the 125 and we're off to a turn. When the turn pairs the board, it comes the deuce of clubs. The action's on Evan. He decides to bet out over pot for $450. He's representing a strong hand like pocket fives. Maybe ace, queen, king, queen, something of that nature. Still, I can't continue for 450, so I reluctantly fold my cards. And he ends up turning over queen five of spades for two pair. Nice hand, Evan. Next hand we look down at pocket threes from under the gun. There's $5 only on the button this time and I raise it up to $20. The button puts in the call and we're going off to a flop heads up which comes 10-5 deuce all hearts. I decide to check it over to the button on this monotone board and he checks behind bringing in the ace of spades on the turn. With my three of hearts I decide to check it over on the turn and he checks back again bringing in the four of spades on the river. We river ourselves the wheel. I decide to lead out for a pot here and get some value. $40 is the bet and the opponent snap calls me with 5-4 of clubs for a river two pair. No good sir we're taking down that $120 pot. 
Hopefully that builds some momentum for the next few hands. Three more hands to go and let's end it with a bang. I look down at ace nine of hearts from the hijack. $15 is on the button. Rocky decides to put in the call and I raise him up to $45. Only Rocky puts in the call once again and we're going heads up to a flop. Flop is pretty good for us. It comes jack seven deuce with two hearts. Obviously we have the front door heart draw and Rocky checks it over to me as he should. I go for a bet of $30 and he decides to put in the call bringing in in the turn card which comes the ace of clubs great card for us because now we pick up a pair rocky checks it over to me for a second time and i get a little bit deceptive here and check it behind i can't only be betting when i have it and checking when i miss when i pick up a good card i probably should be betting in the long run but i'm going to deviate a little bit here and get sneaky and check behind on the turn bringing in the queen of spades on the river when rocky checks to me for a third time gotta get some value i go for one fourth the size of the pot for forty dollars he puts in the call and turns over ace nine of diamonds we're gonna chop up that pot because as that announcer once said everybody loves a chop pot two hands to go and what better hand to pick up than the bullets pocket aces but unfortunately there's only five dollars on the button the ten dollar straddles on from the cutoff a little bit confusing how that works is five dollars on the button ten dollars from the cutoff Alex on the button decides to make it $30 because he's first to act after the cutoff. I decide to raise him up to $75, which is way too small. It should be somewhere like $125 to $150. Either way though, Alex and the other player both put in the call. We're going three ways to a flop. In a $225 pot, we get gin. It comes ace, five, four, bang. We flop top set again. The second set of aces in this session, but yet we're stuck $400 at the moment. Looking to change our fortune in this one, I decide to lead out into the field for $60. The cutoff gets out of the way, but Alex decides to put in the 60 bucks and we're off to the turn. With 345 in the middle, the turn comes a seven of hearts. Really shouldn't change too much unless he had a hand like six, eight, although I don't really think he's playing that. I get a little bit deceptive and go for the check. I think he's gonna continue with any of his strong hands and by checking it also allows him to go for some bluffs with like king, queen, king, 10 of clubs. So when I check it over to him, he does in fact go for a bet half the size of the pot for $175. He only has around $350 more in his stack. So I jam, I put him all in for $525 effective. He thinks about it for a little while but ultimately decides to call. We're off to a run out in this $1,400 pot and we decide to run it two times in all fairness. The first board comes the queen of diamonds and the second board comes the deuce of diamonds. I turn over my top set and he later tells me he had pocket sixes. I don't blame him for putting in the money when I jam on him or honestly betting the turn when I check to him as well. $1,400 though is getting shipped my way which is definitely much needed. Now we're finally up big on the session. Last hand to go, and how else would we want to finish it other than the Cowboys in Texas? My right raises it up to $40, and I get weird. I've had a few beers, and I decide to three bet him to 80 bucks. In the long run, you guys, you're going to want to be making this like $120 to $150. Instead, I go for 80 bucks, and as you can see, that induces some weird action out of the button, who decides to go all in for $125. Middle position goes all in for $90, and I put in the call as well. So we're going three ways to a run out. I have both other opponents covered. Too bad this isn't a bounty tournament. We could be picking up two bounties here. $340 in the pot and the flop comes jack high. Jack 10-3 with two hearts. Turn comes a seven of clubs followed by a deuce of spades on the river. I turn over my pocket kings immediately. And we're good versus 6-5 offsuit from the button. In the middle position turns over ace-queen offsuit. So a pretty great spot for us to pick up another $340. When it's all said and done, we had a rocky session, no pun intended. We rack up our chips and head over to the cage, exchanging our chips for cold hard cash. Evan beat me in croc. He gets it for free. Let's see it, Evan. Bang! Let's go, buddy. There you go. See you, Rocky. Let it go. See you, Rocky's car. We are not in California anymore, boys. This is a truck. This is a truck. <laughs> All right, you guys, that wraps up our five to 15 on the button game here in Lubbock at Sax Social. Just got dropped off by Rocky. Got into that game for 1500, out for 2175, profit of 675 on the night. Let's go. Shout out to everyone that came out. If you guys are in Lubbock, hit up Stack Social. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, Definitely a cool spot here in Lubbock, Texas if you're in town for a Texas Tech game. Hope you guys run good on the felt as always. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. 
Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.